Today I'm going to show you how to replace a standard outlet. This is a three prong outlet. The larger slot is a ground, commonly known as a common, which is your white wire. This is a ground, not common, but a ground. Some of your plug-ins will only have two prongs. So if it has a larger prong, the larger of the two prongs, the larger should go in and can only go in to the larger one. And so what I'm getting at is when you take this out, the white wire will go to the larger one. Remember the small one is your hot, which is black, not like a car. A car black is ground. This is black and it is hot. The white one is your common, the, the larger of the two slots. And this is either green or bare copper. Okay? And then there's going to be a different in amperage. Some of these are only uh, 15 amp, which will, which will carry a 14 gauge wire. Now some of these in back, the port will be small. I'll show you. These little holes here will receive your wire if this is what you want to use. Now your 12 gauge will not fit in this smaller hole. Goes without saying. I'll show you. This is 12 gauge wire. This will not go into a 14 amp outlet. Now they make these, these are commonly for bedrooms, hallways, um, your refrigerators, disposals, uh, things like that that require more amperage. We'll have a 20 amp uh, breaker, 12 gauge wire, and it'll also take a um, 12 gauge, or I mean 20 amp uh, outlet. So don't crisscross those, okay? There's a, there, it's pretty common, um, pretty straightforward. Do not put a 14 amp outlet on 12 gauge wire. This is your dead giveaway. And ask at your local hardware stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, True Value, whatever it is. Um, if you go into a, um, a Kmart, Walmart, things like that, where they do sell these and it's hard to find. Just try to remember what you're looking at. If you're not sure and need to, if you're in a hurry, buy both of them. Make sure you use the right one. Also, brass is also a giveaway. Brass is hot, which coincides with the smaller port. Silver will also coincide. This is ground. Coincide with the larger port, which is ground. Now, your common, or ground, which is not a common, this is your ground ground, okay? This is your third hole, this one here. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to actually turn this off so we're not working while it's live. Now, I've got this nifty little setup here. This is a transmitter. When you plug this in, this little light will turn red. You can see that. So this is a receiver, and when you turn this on, by turning this dial on, this little pointer, you'll scan the breakers, whether it's up and down or across. And so as this will start to make some noise, and you'll back off this dial. And so as you go across, it'll start to pick up less and less breakers until it pricks, picks up just the one. And then so that will identify this outlet. Now be careful. Turn that off and come back. If you're using one of these, make sure this is off. Because sometimes you will, this will miss it, okay? Because they're so close and for whatever reason the wires are the way they're arranged in, in the uh, panel. So, but if you're not using one of these, you can put a radio on, turn it up loud, 
while you're out there switching them on and off. If you have help, you know, of course, they're going to yell to say off, off, you know, so I can't hear you off, off, <laughs> you know, how it goes. Anyway, so let's turn this off and we'll pull this out and I'll show you the workings of that. Okay, let's go turn this off. Okay, so right at the panel, we'll turn this on. Nothing yet. You hear that, so... I see it's going off on a few of them, and so we'll turn it back. Until we find, might be that one, but also one off on this one. Turn it back. Okay, I think we have just the one. This one here. Now see, this is a 20 amp. So that out, it should be a 20 amp outlet. We'll find out. Let's turn this off and go back inside. So in this case, that the reader picked up on that one breaker and you, this is a perfect example. It did not turn this particular one off so we'll have to go back out there and find the right one. That should be one of these two. Okay, so that would make more sense because that's 15 amp. Okay, so let's go back in. Okay. So let's flip this off. Uh, we should be safe. Okay. So that 15 amp did turn this off. And that's pretty regular or common for a hallway outlet to be 15 amp. Okay. So we are off. So let's get this thing pulled out. Sometimes painting these when you paint these walls, they do stick. This one doesn't. That's good. Okay. I like to use a drill because these are too long sometimes and it just gets... Okay. Okay. So I've been doing this a while and I know that when I uh, open something up, I can tell whether it's 12 gauge or 14 gauge. Uh, you know these wires you can see the difference narrow more narrow than the 12 gauge okay so okay so that's perfect now this one it has a set of double whites and double blacks that tells me that this is an inline outlet so in other words it comes in here acts as the junction, goes back out to either a light switch or another outlet. Okay, now some of these do work off a switch, not this particular one. Now the ones that do work off a switch, if they put these in there right, these are usually turned upside down, so you know that they're off a switch, and sometimes people think, oh, they put that outlet in upside down. No. Um, you want to double check, and sometimes it's only the top that works off and out off a switch, and this one is um, constant current. Okay, so you want to be careful with that, and also you want to be careful with putting these on a switch if you have um, a router or anything like that, alarm clock that you don't want turned off. Okay, so 
if we get this thing now that the power's off let me show you what I meant by black and white common bare green so on the silver side you do have your white on the green which is ground you do have your bare sometimes these will come in a green sheath the brass is your black which is hot okay black small slot ground large slot the third prong green now there's another thing that when I was showing you about if this is working off a switch there's a little tab here that's meant to be broken on both sides and that separates these two outlets so now you can run wire to this one off a switch won't affect this one this will be um, always under power okay and another thing you want to make sure that you have if you have to replace this and the wires are I uh, messed up don't cut them too short to where you're not going to be able to work comfortable and if they're too long the wire is too long you won't be able to get it back in the box okay and so you want to bend these down and then these up and it'll act like accordion where you can push them back in I turned this off and it turned my my overhead light off so I have to use that drop light and that's pretty much it okay now these little holes here if they wanted to you could connect these right into the holes and when they built this house these contractors go through them so fast that they get one system and they should whip it right through and then if they all you know they all come through strip them screw them in done okay and that's pretty much it so <clears throat> I'll show you I'm going to take this apart no I use leverage now these are back out all the way if you want them to I kind of like to spread them in the, in the way they came out. Hot, round, and then bottom. Now, if this is a bonding, this is a little collar that's copper. And if so, if um, you get this situation, you want to slide that little piece over and crimp that down with a crimper. And it's called bonding. And that bonding is correctly done this way. If you're using a screw cap, they don't consider that uh, code because you get a tiny little electrolysis that goes across here and eventually it will corrode that and then the ground will break. Okay, so let's start putting this back together. Okay, so what I have in my arsenal are strippers. You see how you bite down on the sheathing and then these little teeth pull it off as it goes back. These are pretty neat. Otherwise, you're going to have to use a uh, Dykes side cutters and just kind of ease around the sheath and then just kind of pull it out. The end of this has to be straight for you to do that. These are crimpers. Now, this is what I meant about this little bonding collar. It'll sit in here and it'll crimp it and you just go as far as you can and now it's bonded. Okay. And the other thing I like to use are the... 
just a standard pair of needle nose. Okay, old one, new one. Okay, so it doesn't matter what order you start. Um, one important thing that if you don't have this the luxury of having this tester, um, you can use this or, like I said, uh, keep something plugged in to let you know it's turned off. But it's always good to have one of these testers to make sure you don't have... That's just static electricity when you do that. If you hold it up against there and there's nothing. Sometimes you do want to um, check the white ones because if someone loaned here before and they decided they wanted to use as white for ground, which is okay as long as you put black tape on there to mark it to let everybody know, hey, wait a minute, there's black tape on here, so they're using this as ground. Okay, that's real important. Okay, so, all right. So the new one, you want to make sure that these screws are out. Now these, they only come out to a certain point unless you force them, and that's by design. Okay, so you don't screw all the way out and lose these things. Not everybody has an extra screw laying around. Okay, all right, so then, We'll get, try to clean these up and get a loop on them. And just kind of slide it in. You can take a pair of needle loops and push those ends together. So when you strip these, you want at least three quarter inch. Uh, of bare wire there so you can loop it around that screw. Okay, so let's get this one looped. Just like that. And you're going to slide it in behind there. Just like that. So we'll get these sensed. Not over tighten, just snug. Okay. Okay, we got that side. <clears throat> I like to have this end away. These are counterclockwise, or uh, I'm sorry, clockwise when you tighten them, right? And so I like to make sure that, that the end of that wire is going with counterclockwise so when you Tighten it, doesn't push it back out, but does grab it and bring it around. Okay. So let's loop that one. Just like that. And then you want to bring that end over. Kind of clean it up. Cinch it down. Okay. Now remember, this is the way we started, and that's the way we want to go back in, so we don't lose our bearing. I do the same thing with the ground. Open that up a little bit. You want to make sure when you push this back in there that. Neither one of these sides touch that bare wire. And you don't want to put a 14 gauge outlet on a 12 gauge wire because it's not meant to be that way. You'll either warm up the outlet if you're pulling too many amps which is a fire hazard and the same with a uh, 20 amp outlet don't put that on a um, 12 gauge 
So use the proper, use 12 gauge, 20 amp, 14 gauge, uh, 14, 15 amp, or 15 amp uh, outlet. Same with the breaker. The breaker, if it's a 20 amp breaker, it should have 12 gauge. If it's a uh, 15 amp breaker, it should have 14 gauge. Don't put 12 gauge on a um, 15 gauge or 15 amp uh, breaker or vice versa because you're overloading. If you have 12 gauge on a four or a 15 amp breaker, it's going to keep popping on you because it's drawing too much. Same with the wire. You don't want to mismatch the wire if you have to splice it. Okay, so we turn this down, fold this up, get it to go in there like an accordion. Okay. Alrighty. Now remember that copper wire, make sure that that stays away from any uh, of your screws on the side. Okay, so as you push it back, make sure that is clear and safe. Okay, so it looks like it's going in okay. So get that started. Get the bottom one started. So we'll get this bit on there, turn that power back on. I know sometimes if this is too far in and you put this plate on there and it draws this, especially the hard ones, if it draws this plate too far in, it either breaks here and now it looks like crap. You know, and if it's loose like this, the same difference. You know, you can afford to screw that outlet in a little bit more. Now this doesn't, doesn't have to be too tight, just snug. Okay. Better. Okay, let's get it turned back on. Okay, I turned it back on. So let's see if this thing works. Perfect. Okay.